Welcome back to 247 Motorsports. And I know you've all been curious. So tonight, I'm gonna show you three events in one video, plus a lot more. The last few videos I shared with you guys about Brandon's car, we were doing a lot of testing. We got the bar angles and suspension lined out, getting the car to go straight again. Brandon hit some killer PBs. We had a minor inconvenience, but all in all, things were on the right path and we were making some killer progress. Pretty quick tune up in the car, ran it down, car ran great. <clears throat> Came back, pulled my two hot cylinders, um, a plug on each side of the warmest cylinders we have. Uh, Joe took a look at the plugs, fueling looked really good, let it motor cool down, put the plugs back in, went to the staging lanes, and uh, when I guess when I fired it up right away, as soon as the car fired, I heard like a like, but kind of loud. So I killed the car immediately, and needless to say, we parked it. Um, 
I looked at valve covers real quick. I yanked them off. There was nothing in the valve tray and all the valve lash was good, everything like that. So I knew I had to come home and dig a little deeper. Well, nothing really left to do at this point, but load up the car. We gotta get it home and figure out what's going on. So we finish off our night and head home. off to make sure that nothing was you know just see if everything was good and free and stuff and I got to a spot on the on the rotation with the torque wrench and the motor stopped turning over so I was like uh oh so when that happened um, number seven cylinder was at top dead seven which is one of the plugs I had out so <clears throat> um, we pulled all the plugs out of it all the plugs look great no signs of anything um, so then I dropped the K-member, dropped the suspension, pulled the oil pan off, pulled a couple uh, bearings and everything out of it. Everything looked great. Bearings looked like they haven't even been run yet. Um, <clears throat> so pretty much we knew something had to be in between the head and the cylinder. Well, rewind three weeks prior, I was taking the valve covers off and one of my little stainless valve cover nuts, I, got, I lost it. When I took it off, it fell. I saw it hit the frame rail and bounce. It looked like it like hit the header, bounced on the frame rail. Um, we're still on, the plugs were in the motor, so I wasn't worried about anything. So I was just like, whatever, I couldn't find it. I looked for like 40 minutes, <clears throat> um, just put another nut on it. Well, when I pulled the head off on number seven cylinder, somehow when I had that spark plug out of the motor, 2023 luck for Brandon, like this year, the, that nut found its way into the spark plug hole. Like you couldn't make it up. I, you know, it's like, if I wasn't just there testing, it's like it's sabotaged, but it's just God sabotaging me. So um, obviously I just fired it real quick and shut it off. So it didn't really do no harm. I had a couple extra brand new pistons, even though it, it, all it did is make like a, a little mark on the piston, like in the perfect spot. It didn't get the valve. It didn't get the cylinder wall or anything like that. So what are the odds that are happening? I, I mean, you know, <laughs> one in a million, you know, I, I you couldn't, I, I had the head off dropping it down the spark plug hole and I could barely get it to go in like aiming it. So how that happened, I have no idea, but it did. So we threw a new slug in there, um, you know, checked the whole rotator out, checked some bearings out, checked the thrust bearings out. The motor literally looks like it's brand new. So <clears throat> um, just touched up the head with a, with a sanding disc where it made a little mark in the head, put everything back together, car's running great. Well, um, you know, Dave Clayput from Proformance, he's my go-to guy, him and uh, his employee Russ, came over, <clears throat> they helped me do, go through, do some of it, he checked some bearings out, checked some slug out, or threw the new slug in while I was at work because I literally just didn't have time to. And then I got like a three hour window to put it back together and Dave sent uh, um, Russ over and he helped me, you know, just go through everything, throw everything back together. And then, um, you know, car fired right up, sounded great again and it uh, was back underway until the next saga. So I literally have zero footage of this horrific event. The oil pan was dropped, every wire was unplugged, every rod, every rocker, every nut, screw, all of it, scattered all across the 247 garage. It was a disaster, you guys. Not a mess, a nightmare. Somehow we managed to dissect and reassemble just in time for Brandon's car to join me and Bad Ash in Ohio for No Prep Kings. Pretty much 
We got the car done about four hours before we had to leave for Dragway 42. We were just gonna bring this for Ashton locals only, but kind of just said, screw it. We'll get the car back together. It's been running so good. We're going to a good track. Let's bring it. <clears throat> so we slapped it back together, fired it, fired up, threw it in the trailer. <music> Fantastic. Round one, small tire. Yes, ma'am. You ready? I think so. Good track, too. Yeah, we just gotta see if after putting the car back together, if it runs worth the shit, you know? Nobody knows we took the car apart yet, oh, but yeah. It's supposed to be sad yeah. after the run. Oh, the <laughs> we got a little blackjack in our life. All right, I wish you the best. Thank you, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Get there, warm it up, put it on the brake, everything's good to go. Um, go get the car into the burnout box for first round. the car dies well as I'm cranking it back over I notice I have no fuel pressure cable so immediately I know I broke fucking another fuel pump cable so um, I just said screw it for the weekend you know I, I did ask later on after she was done testing but I wanted to concentrate on ash um, and nobody you know nobody runs those cables and cars or anything you're gonna find it at NPK because none of their tanks are in the back like us so um, so that's it we parked it we raced Ash. We didn't just race Ash. The very next day, he helped me take this car all the way to the finals. Interview yourself, my shit's broke. An awful night with his car and an exceptional day with mine. We did have a race Sunday and everyone was in my ass, come on, fix the car, fix the car. and. Um, Greg and uh, Greg Bucko and uh, Mike Otis were making posts for me at home because it was their event. They wanted me to race in it. So I get a text from Otis saying, I found you a cable. What, what else do you need? So I told him, well, last time I used some rod and a bunch of zip ties and I, you know, kind of rigged the longer one in there. So um... last time was earlier this year at KD Dragway. 
joking when I say Brandon wants to quit breaking. Would we break our fuel cable? Last time we were saved by CJ Buckner and team. To the rescue! Fingers are but this is all starting to feel a little deja vu. That next morning, I play Tool B, and with a lot of sweat and hard work, Brandon gets it done and we end up racing. I'm praying for the same perseverance this Sunday. They got a different one, a brand new cable, um, which was Max Peasy's uh, spare cable, which was, you know, amazing of him to lend that to us. Um, so we pulled an all-nighter, drove straight to Indiana, threw the car in Joey's stacker, <laughs> and I went to work and found a new cable in it. What's being done to stop the problem? It's been another deadly weekend on the roads. correctly everything was good to go and um, so we fired the car up again put it on the brake we were good to go um, so we went up for round one of that race um, and actually the competitor that I was racing um, had some trouble getting there so I, they told me I had a broke by so I was like all right cool we're gonna get to make a pass with this thing so I fired the car to do a burnout I start driving forward to do the burnout and this time I actually hear a snap and then the car shuts off and I see the fuel pressure just dumped and I'm like you know, you gotta be kidding me at this point. So I told them all to back me off the track. Greg said, hey, just go take the beam with the golf cart because it's your broke by. And you know, that way if you can fix it. Well, well it is what it is. Finish line. Well, I, right away I went and threw it up on Joey Stacker, ripped the cable out, and this time it broke. Well, here, let's just show. Right. So, so this was Max's brand new cable. So it broke right there like this. Not only, obviously you can see it twisted. So at this point, you know, I'm just, this was another, you know, I had to order Max another $515 cable. I had ordered myself a $515 cable. So now for two warm-ups, we just spent a thousand dollars. So needless to say, I was done with the car for the day. We didn't have any cables anyways. $550 to idle to the pit. 550. Ask me. Oh, I said 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 ask me. That's it, the wrap. Well, it wasn't a wrap for all of us as I still had to race. And he got me rounds again and another semifinal. congratulate Ashley Mork this weekend. She did really well on No Prep Kings Locals Only. Oh yeah? She, I think she went to the finals and then she also went to the finals at 41 the next day. Awesome. I talked to Brandon. Um, he's been struggling all year with his car. Oh my he's gosh. Been doing, he's, he's had a, a lot of bad luck and a lot that people haven't even seen. He's not even shown on this channel. He's having a terrible year. 
Yeah. And uh, I feel bad for him, man. We started the year off pretty strong, actually. And then came Lapeer, Michigan, where our dreams were shattered and the beginning of our black cloud arose. So we rebuilt and started over. Yeah, in three weeks and a day since the wreck. It's been rough, but we love this, and this is where we're, we're going to put all of our, our time and our money and our energy just to get back out and, and race again. He, I mean, he's always been up there as like one of the top five to ten small tire front side guys, and he's just having a terrible year, and he's kind of yeah. down on himself. Cincy Street Nights at Edgewater Sports Park. War in the Woods at Brown County Dragway. All right, everybody, I'm here with Brandon Moore, 247 Moto Sports. Yes, sir. And last night you just you had a little bit of bad luck. You know, we made a really good first pass off the trailer. We're fighting a uh, anti-roll bar that needs to be changed, so. Um, you know, I got a little bit of wheel speed against Nate, and uh, the car was driving left and ended up driving right and put in the grass and obviously just had to save it. I'm just worried that with the anti-roll bar how it is and going in the grass yesterday, if that's what caused it, that I'm just not looking to wreck my car. So we do an anti-roll bar change, we find instant center again, we change bar angle, suspension, everything and anything just to get this car to go straight again. Next up, we got Bunker Hill, and what an eventful one this was. Definitely scared the shit out of me, um, but everything's dry. There's no engine, so I went to crank the motor over when we got back in the pits here, and uh, the starter took a shit. So I've been hearing like a little bit of a squeal on the end of some of my runs, and I couldn't think of what it was. Well, now we know it was a starter. So um, somehow, and Joey has a starter for one of these things in the trailer. So really, no big deal. What if I sadly jumped in and told you it wasn't just the starter? Gangsters Paradise, Brown County Dragway, where we lost to... Another parts malfunction, a failed turbo wheel. I told him it'll turn around. You know, he broke he broke two fuel pump cables this weekend on his car, and he worked like 200 hours. He did that at KD too. KD Dragway and our first fuel pump cable dilemma. And his his uh, when he raced you at KD, he had like something happened with his train. Now. Fucking blew a trans or something, it was losing a tire like it was a car. And then we leaked trans fluid all over the pits. Somehow, after making seven clean passes, we lost our oil pan plug. But the night goes on, and Brandon gets this car not only in the finals, but a badass win. Next up, it's the World Series in No Prep at Onondaga Dragway, where we finally get this car in the finals.
we come up just a tad short again, which brings me to GLD testing. And why not one more minor mishap before the present day? The breather popped out and the fucking, it started on fire, but I got it with my own shit. Holy flipping flip. He's okay. Good lord. Get yourself off the car right away when you get back to Yep. That's what you said aluminum was doing to After the fire fix, lightning striked. And this was the nut in the spark plug hole. Which finally brings me to now. Why did we bring the car to two events, No Prep Kings and Midwest Cash Days, and we didn't get to race her? The storms of racing, you guys. So what do we do after weathering a weekend like that, let alone this entire year? Later in the week, we got back here. I took Max's cable out, I ordered him a new one, I ordered another insert for mine, I, but I was like, obviously we have a problem somewhere. So I took the fuel pump down. As soon as I took the fuel pump down, it spun over a couple times and then it deadlocked. Well, I spun it over backwards and a piece of metal, like almost like what would look like welding slag fell out of the pump, but it's an aluminum tank and it was magnetic. So how that got in my fucking tank, I have no idea. Just 2023 again, you know, just keeps blessing me. I pulled all the, the gears out of the pump, checked them for chips, checked everything. They were literally perfect, not scratched, not anything. Um, I took the whole cable down, made sure that the cable went through the sleeve, spun it out of drill loose on the floor. That way I knew if the cable was gonna bind anywhere, it would do it when it wasn't secured. Did it for like five minutes, that was good to go. So put the whole fuel system back together, checked the filter, cleaned all that, everything was good. Um, and then, uh, you know, I we were gonna go to Onondaga to race, and I decided, you know, I'm not even gonna start the car. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it in the trailer because it seems like every time I start it, and warm it up, everything's good, and then I, you know, I can't get to the first burnout. The fuel system worked flawlessly. So. So after US 41 Midwest Cash Days, it's kind of a rough week. I mean. A lot of racers understand there's ups and downs, but um, lots of downs. It's been a lot of downs, so we had a really rough week. You really didn't just, know just what. Just running on no sleep, first of all. Like, <clears throat> I didn't have time for all this nonsense to be happening, pretty much. That's great. <laughs> But you're back. I mean, sometimes we just need a little refresh. Like you said, maybe some sleep. Think about a plan, where you want your car to go, the team to go. And I mean, you feeling good right now? Onondaga went well, right? Yeah, so I mean, I guess I came to a crossroad where I was like, you know, hey, we could just sell all this junk and go on vacations or Kind of work more, buckle down, and uh, you know, put in more work. Which you know, this stuff's a lot of work, especially just the three of us. I feel that my car's still way too much. Like my car's put my doors back on, and I'm back to street trim. I can drive the car to and from the lanes, roll up windows. I could take that ugly ass front end off that I have, and it would be all steel, all glass again. And I could just do what everyone's doing. Go race daily driver, like, go race extreme street, like all the small tire cars that can't win or do that. But obviously that's just not what I want to race in. Like I want to, I want to race the baddest of the bad and you know, I want to get back to, to win. So <clears throat> um, pretty much I think ever since that accident, the car hates me. It hates the front end we put on it. It hates that it's got a little nicks and dents here and there. It's not as clean as it always was. So this is, another front end for the car so obviously the car is my you know i had the car since it was brand new it's an 03 cobra i hated that i had to put gt side skirts on it to match the front end i hated the flat front end i hated the flat hood i um it just you know it grew on me a little bit but not enough and i feel the car hated it so 
Car's gonna come out looking sick again. It's gonna be clean. Jordan's gonna redo another front end for it. Um, we're gonna change the wheels up. Car's getting changed colors. Um, it's a little TLC. The inside's gonna get cleaned up. The wiring's gonna get cleaned up. It's gonna lose weight where it's allowed to lose weight. Um, I'm keeping an eye on all the rules that all these promoters are kind of bouncing back and forth with and keeping in mind of limited this and full out run what you brung that. And, you know, I'm probably going to find out how to build the car and fit where it needs to fit and be able to race both, but as light as possible. So, you know, I feel that the cars that beat me here and there are probably three to 400 pounds lighter than I am. They probably have big blocks. Part of me might want to put a big block in it. I don't know yet. We'll see what, what the winner brings. But for now, Jordan's got a checklist of shit he's going to do, which is going to make the car look as nice as my car should look and how it always be. You want to know what I see in all these throwback videos? A lot of close losses with a ton of dumb issues. Keep cleaning up the issues and all those races are wins. We got in the finals at 41 and they had a boost controller malfunction and she lost to like a GTO or something. So Ashley's carrying 247 Motorsports. Ashley is carrying. <laughs> it's her birthday too, by the way. So happy birthday, Ashley. Happy birthday. It's the good, the bad, the ugly. 24-7 Motorsports and big changes ahead. But you know, her car, was another, you know, it starts to run awesome, it's running fast, and, you know, she loses the finals of her race because the boost leash stops listening and it starts making boosts as fast as it wants to, it has it spinning, and then it did it again Sunday, and, we're, you know, this car is just losing the cars it shouldn't lose to. Um, so, you know, in drag racing, if you can't be deadly consistent and have complete control over every scenario, you will not win races. So, you know, we've won a lot of races in our time because we were always consistent. We were always there, and we might not have had the fastest car there, but it was consistent. We lost that. This car has never been consistent because it's just a fat day, the stock ECU and a boost leash. Not because I think the car's not sick, it's gone faster than I thought it ever should have, it's because now she has three small tire cars wherever we go, and it sucks. So, with an IRS and being as heavy it is, and the stock computer and all that, it's just, you know, we've met the limit of it, it just doesn't do its job. So, um, either the car gets a holly or it gets sold and Ash gets a different true street style car like everyone else. She's, uh, I'm not gonna pressure her to make a decision. I've told her how I feel about what I wanna do with her and the program. Um, you know, so whether she wants to do that and try to win more races or just have fun and be there and try to be relevant, that, that's on her. But the decision I went with for myself is an easy one. I'm just gonna get in where I fit in and I gotta make the car lighter and make it run harder and test more. So which way are you gonna go? I think you know the answer to that. Terrible. I think everybody this isn't my video. needs to tell Ash that uh, they wanna see her in the winner's circle and that they're uh, on my side with uh, maybe getting her like into a, a year older body style with a solid rear end and uh, 800 pounds lighter with the same engine and same combo and seeing her go four or five tons faster and win some races. You know, I mean, as much as you can fall in love with the body style, which this car does look gorgeous, but if you don't win races, what the fuck are we doing here? I think she's doing well. <laughs> That's, it's, it's over, babe. I mean, you got Cali Nate winning daily driver. You wanna race him on the street? So, I hate to break it to you guys, but Badash is staying. I do, however, want to lose 500 pounds, get a holly, maybe a solid rear end, and definitely go five tenths faster. You have your cycle, and I have mine. So where does that leave us? Oh yeah, the moral of the story here. No one can say we didn't try. I mean, this year has been full of adversity. It's been full of stupid parts failures and water coming out of places we couldn't find and ring gears breaking and hollies frying and anti-roll bars that are piles of shit and, you know, chassis people in the past that did things the wrong way. And, you know, it's just, it's been nonstop. So, I mean, it's, and I'm missing tons of stuff and the reasons that we've gone out. But, 
you know, it pissed me off, but I wore it on the chin. I kept trying, and it just didn't go our way, so. Well, I'm proud of your <clears throat> choice, determination to keep at it. Like you said, you can go one way or another. You have two choices in life, give up or try harder. So we choose to push back and keep living the dream. Thank you for watching 247 Motorsports. You know the drill. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. P.S. I'm sick, in case you couldn't tell.